Hi everybody, this is Alan Elman, the Blue Collar Investor. In this video, I'm going to discuss the 10 most costly mistakes that covered call writers make and how to avoid them. Now, I want to premise my remarks by saying that over the years, I have made each and every one of these mistakes at some point in time. My goal is for you, fellow blue collar investors, to avoid these errors so it won't cost you as you become outstanding covered call writers. So let's get started. Number one, do not only sell covered call options on stocks that happen to be in your portfolio. I get a lot of people telling me that that's what they do. They just write calls on stocks that happen to be uh, owned by them at that particular time. These stocks may not be appropriate for covered call writing for different reasons. We only want stocks that are sound fundamentally and technically and that aren't extremely volatile stocks. So when you're selling covered calls, make sure that you have the appropriate stocks in your portfolio before you sell the calls on them. Mistake number two. Do not only sell an option because of the high returns you generate from that option. When an option gives you returns of 5, 6, 7, 10 percent in one month, that means the stock is an extremely volatile stock or very risky. Risk is something that we blue collar investors want to avoid. Our sweet spot is somewhere between 2 to 4 percent per month. So if you see a stock whose option is generating ridiculously high returns, there's a reason for it and normally that reason will dissuade us from purchasing that stock and selling the, the uh, option on that particular equity. Mistake number three, don't only sell out of the money calls. Whenever I read an article describing covered call writing, I see the same thing over and over again. It's a stock from the S&P 500 where one month out of the money strike is sold. Well, out of the money strikes are great in uptrending markets when the technicals of that particular stock are great. But sometimes the market is volatile, sometimes it's, it's consolidating or going sideways, and sometimes the technicals of that particular equity are mixed. In those cases, you're much better off with an in-the-money strike. So evaluate your strikes and don't automatically go to the out-of-the-money strike. Mistake number four, don't sell an option and fall asleep. Don't be the type of person that buys a stock, sells an option, then clasps your hands, get down on your knees, and pray. That's not what we're all about. We need to monitor that stock and that option. And we do it by having a watch list where we can access the information very easily. And if a stock is misbehaving, we can take action. And I've written an entire book on exit strategies and how to deal with these type of situations. Mistake number five, don't sell an option when there's an upcoming earnings report. Earnings reports represent risk and volatility. For example, if a stock historically trades up or down two dollars from its current price, uh, let's say the stock is thirty-eight dollars and in a normal situation it can trade anywhere from 36 to 40 in a particular month, well that's fine for selling covered call options. But if there's an upcoming earnings report, there's a lot of volatility. That represents a much greater range that that stock can trade in, perhaps anywhere down from 30 up to 46. Well, by selling a call, we're limiting our upside, but we still have all that extra downside. It doesn't make any sense. So if a particular stock is reporting earnings in that particular contract period, I would bump it from my portfolio and then reevaluate it after the earnings report. Mistake number six, do not use a broker whose commissions will influence your trading decisions. Now I've made it pretty uh, clear to everybody that I sell between 50 and 75 contracts per month and normally that means my portfolio has between 15 and 25 stocks. I do a lot of trading. Some people do a lot more than I do. And if the broker's commission was a factor, then I would perhaps limit my exit strategies and I'd be a little more cautious about diversification. I don't want commissions, broker commissions, influencing your trading decisions. 
So what you need to do is you need to educate yourself to the point where you do not need the assistance of a broker for this particular part of your portfolio and you could use an online discount broker where the trading commissions are a non-event. Mistake number seven, do not use a system that requires excessive time or like I like to say set yourself up for success. Whatever you're doing if it's taking a lot of time you may be ambitious at the beginning after a while you'll tend not to do it anymore. So your system should be efficient and it should be accurate. Mistake number eight. Do not sell options in markets that are appreciating exponentially or declining precipitously. If a market is going up in leaps and bounds like it did in the late 90s, well, then we actually don't want to sell the call. We just want to own the stock outright because we can get our 2 to 3% a month without selling call options. These times are very rare. And at the same time, if a market is dropping precipitously as it did in the early 2000s when the dot-com uh, dot bubble exploded, or in 2008 with that terrible recession we just got over, then not only don't we want to be selling options, but we actually want to step out of the stock market and put our money in, in other assets like perhaps real estate or, or cash equivalents. These situations are extremely rare and 95% of the time or more the, the markets will be appropriate for selling covered call options. Mistake number nine. Do not have more than 20% of your portfolio invested in one particular industry. Even if that industry is smoking hot, it could turn around very quickly. Do not put all your eggs in one basket. If you have five stocks, then each of those stocks should be in different industries. Ten stocks, you can have two in the same industry, and so on. For those of you that uh, want to diversify even more, you can do sector diversification, where the stocks will be even less correlated. And for those of you that don't know the industries into particular sectors, if you email me at alan at thebluecollarinvestor.com, I'll be happy to send you a list of all the sectors and the industries in those sectors. And finally, and probably most important, mistake number 10, is whatever your investment strategy is, do not invest in it until you are fully educated. And that doesn't mean you shouldn't have a broker or an advisor. Uh, I don't. I do everything on my own, and I know many of you also do it on your own. But if you do have a broker or an advisor, you should still be educated so that you can evaluate the type of work that they're doing for you. So no matter what your investment strategy is, no matter what your system is, whether you're following my system or some other system, you should be educated before you make any investment decisions or prove any investment decisions. So there you have it folks, my list of the 10 most common mistakes covered call writers make and how to avoid them. I hope you found this helpful and I look forward to hearing from all of you down the road. Take care everybody.